A major new UN report out today warns that the climate crisis is threatening the world's food supply and that humans must drastically alter their food production to prevent the catastrophic effects of global warming. CNN's Bill Weir is in li live in Iowa for us this morning with a look at how farmers are trying to help alleviate this crisis. Bill, good morning. Good morning, Erica. As we know, farmers are incredibly tough people, but these are such tough times. Uh, the annual meeting of the American Corn Growers Association included a seminar on suicide prevention this year. And on top of all this stress comes this new sweeping science that looks at the land, the state of the land around the world and says things are only going to get worse. But of all the sectors out there, farmers could be the key ally in the fight against this, in the fight against this climate crisis. We had a very, very wet spring and too much rain to plant. Too much rain yeah. to plant. Justin Jordan is among the millions of American farmers living on an emotional roller coaster that only seems to go down. So this corn is, is almost two feet shorter than it normally is. Thanks to a bizarro spring, he's looking at a 30% drop in yield. It's a kind of feeling of helplessness and stress is what it kind of feels like. Yeah. So, but you just do what you can with what you have to work with. At least he has a crop. Too many farmers lost everything to epic floods, and even the lucky ones are losing sleep over fear of an early frost, and trade wars, and the highest farm debt in a generation. And on top of it all comes the latest alarming report from the IPCC, which finds that growing food from India to Iowa will only get harder as the climate gets harsher. So we're going to see by uh, uh, mid-century, by current projections, that our number of days above 90 degrees is going to rise from about 17 days per year above 90 degrees in, in a Des Moines. That'll be up more like 50 to 70. The report finds that about three quarters of the Earth's ice-free surface has been paved, plowed, or deforested. Great for economies, horrible for nature's cycles. And with all the diesel and fertilizer used to grow the modern meal, they say agriculture is to blame for nearly a quarter of greenhouse gas emissions. But here's the good news. Right now, every corn plant in this field is pulling carbon out of the sky and putting it in the ground. And with the right amount of innovation and financial motivation, a smart farmer can leave it there and still feed the world. Iowa could be one giant carbon sink. And unlike miners and drillers and frackers, they don't have to change careers in order to help save life as we know it. Just listen to all the birds, too. Something you don't hear when you walk out in a cornfield. I mean, there's just so much more, like I said, not only the plant biodiversity, but the wildlife it's diversity. Life. It's exactly. life. Exactly. Justin takes advantage of a federal program that pays him to let part of his fields go wild, which brings higher yields in the long term. Over in Nebraska, Brandon Honeycutt is trying out cutting-edge science funded by Bill Gates that uses bacteria instead of synthetic fertilizer, the stuff that creates ocean dead zones and red tides. That's all a petroleum-based kind of products industry that we live in. And the more we can move to a more natural bacterial-based, I think that's better for all of us. And even some conservatives like Ray Gasser are joining this green revolution even though the Republican refuses to blame a warming planet entirely on human habits. So how do you feel about big members of your party, even the president, casting doubt and skepticism into whether or not humans can even help stop this? Well, I think it's more about not having uh, severe regulations, you know. I think a one-size-fits-all regulations really does not fit agriculture anywhere. But like many Republican neighbors, he still embraces wind energy cover crops, and soil conservation. Well, as we farm a little bit differently, as we sequester nutrients and carbon, you know, we're all, you know, we're doing the right thing, you yeah. know, and that's what it's about. It's trying to do the right thing. We all want to do that. Absolutely. And it shouldn't be political. Amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, you've been talking to farmers there. They, of course, experienced this firsthand. Here in Washington, this data is political. It's science. Tell us what the farmers tell you. Well, it's really interesting, uh, Jim. You know, these guys live on this land generation after generation. They know this acreage better than any. 
politician, even any scientist everywhere. And what you're seeing is an increasing conversation from both sides of the political spectrum as to what to do about this. This spring has been brutal. Uh, flash floods and crazy frosts. And so the crop yield in Iowa here, Nebraska, all across the heartland is expected to take a hit. This is on top of the trade wars, uh, on top of record debt, the worst since the 80s when farm aid was created. So calls to farm aid suicide lines are doubling. It's really a grim time. Uh, but what's interesting about this report is it looks at all the land use around the world and how we've basically paved and logged and deforested three quarters of the planet, which is great for economies, horrible for natural cycles. The good thing about farmers, um, they are natural uh, carbon farmers. Even the, you know, everything here from these soybeans to the corn to these trees is pulling carbon dioxide out of the air, putting it in the soil. So they're talking about what if we had a market that would incentivize carbon farming? Mm. I would pay somebody not for producing the cheapest beans, uh, but the most sustainable beans. We could go into the mm. store and the way you got dolphin safe tuna, uh, carbon neutral produce. And, and so these guys could go, you know, men and women could go from becoming a big part of the problem. This report blames almost a quarter of greenhouse gases on agriculture and land use. Uh, they could go from that to warriors in this fight, unlike miners mm. and frackers who would have to be retrained, to, you know, install solar panels or whatnot. Farmers could make a huge difference right away. It's a great point because there are innovative solutions uh, to this where you can incentivize and then there are other economic benefits. I mean, th that's the broader conversation the country needs to have. But again, it's so politicized. You can't even talk about the, the facts. You can't even talk about the science. Uh, Iowa State Fair begins today. Iowa's got a few farmers in it, as you know. What's mm -hmm. the conversation politically with the new Democratic candidates here? I mean, are farmers there saying to the folks running for president that this is a priority for them? Yes. In fact, I, you know, I spent all week here. I've talked to farmers of all political stripes. And to a person, they say, look, if you want to win Iowa, we got to be at the table as we talk about this. What they fear the most, most conservatives, even those who admit uh, human habits are to blame, worry about one size fits all regulation that may not work on their particular farm. And so if there's ways, Elizabeth Warren put out her big plan yesterday. It includes a lot of these new ideas, incentivizing farmers to let some of their fields go wild for biodiversity, uh, cover crops. Uh, No-till farming, which leaves the carbon in the ground. There's all this new innovation out of Silicon Valley. Uh, Bill Gates threw $70 million behind a company called Pivot, which wants to be uh, for fertilizer what Uber is to taxis. Uh, you know, using natural materials instead of the, the, you know, the synthetic stuff that mucks up waterways and creates dead zones. So there's a lot of exciting ideas. Uh, and we've got a climate town hall coming up in a couple weeks. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see yeah. whose plan is better. Listen, I'm so glad you're doing this because, because like with gun control, right, people, with the environment, folks throw their hands up in the air and say, well, listen, yeah, maybe it's bad. There's nothing we can do about it. Fact is, there are solutions. People are experimenting them with them with success. Bill, we are great to have you on the story.